Welcome to Desk Careers. I am so excited to be introducing another incredible guest. Today we are speaking with Yazan Al Ghazawi, who comes to us from SAE Creative Institute here in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. Yazan is currently the head of film. But previously, he was in Film Ed and he was a festival director for film. Welcome, Yazan. It's so great to have you with us today. It's great to be with you guys and it's great to meet everyone. And I'm really happy to be here. I have so many questions, lots of exciting things going on for our media students. And today's very exciting for us because one, we're live in the classroom. And two, we get to be talking about our favorite thing, film. And, and your experience of being both in industry and in classroom helps us to connect the dots between what we're learning and how it's actually going to be used in that workplace. So let's go back to the beginning. I, I want to let our students understand a little more about Yazan, the individual. How old were you when you knew that film was what you wanted to be doing in your career? Um, so I've always really loved film. For me, film has always been an escape ever since I can remember. Um, but I never really thought of it as a viable career option, uh, you know, growing up. Um, you know, I mean, I'm obviously much older than <laughs> your students. And so in my time, um, you know, uh, my parents were kind of old school and, uh, and they maybe pushed me towards more traditional um, careers, you know, uh, uh, like in, uh, you know, as a doctor or engineer or these, you know, these kinds of what they call traditional um, careers and uh, really not, not so much towards the arts. Um, and I actually, before I uh, ended up working in film, I worked in logistics and I worked after I graduated university, um, I did media for my undergrad. Um, and after I graduated university, I worked in uh, logistics and I worked in investment banking before I really kind of knew the or figured out that I wanted to do film. Um, so for me, it was kind of, it wasn't obviously a straightforward um, journey. Um, obviously, as I said, you know, ever since I can remember, I've always really loved film. And um, when, I, uh, when I was in high school, I was involved in drama um, and theater. And that was, you know, really, uh, you know, kind of a place where I, I found myself um, in terms of interests. But again, it, it, I, I never really considered it as a viable career option or considered the arts as a viable career option until, um, you know, later on in life, I, I would say maybe my early 20s, um, after I, you know, after three or four years of working, I kind of figured out, okay, well, you know, I'm really unhappy and what do I, what do I want to do? Um, and that's when, that's when, it, you know, the lightning bolt, as they say, came and I figured out what I wanted to do. Who would you say on that career journey was your mentor? How did you know that not only did you enjoy it, but that you could make a, a really good income in doing it? Because I think this is the thing that concerns young people the most is I mm. love film. I love working in creative industry. But one of the challenges they probably face when having this conversation with the adults in their life is do it as a hobby. It, you know, is there really money to be made in that? So who was your mm. mentor? Who was that person that said, Yazan, you can do this, you can do it well, and you can actually make this become your career. It is a profitable industry to go into. Um, well, to be honest with you, I never really had one mentor. Um, I think uh, maybe circumstance was more my mentor. I think um, so when I was uh, working in investment banking, I had a lot of my friends, so you're talking, this is around 2003, um, during this time uh, in Jordan, uh, the, um, the government introduced this organization called the Royal Film Commission. And this was like a, a government body that was, um, you know, mandated to promote film culture, to encourage uh, uh, Hollywood films and other international productions to come and film in Jordan. Um, and, you know, to give workshops and these kinds of things. And so this was happening in Jordan. I wasn't living in Jordan at the time, but a lot of my friends who I was uh, with in school ended up working at this institution. And it, all, it was all very exciting. And so that's something that kind of inspired me. At the time I was living in Kuwait and um, I thought, well, you know, we don't have this in Kuwait. So um, I, I ended up individually working on organizing a film festival for short films. Um, and this was this uh, coincided with the time that I left my job in investment banking. Um, and so for me, uh, I never really, I mean, I was obviously much younger and I never really thought 
of what kind of income I would be making at the time. But later on, after I did my master's and I did freelancing and I worked full time in production companies, um, it became apparent that this is actually a career. And of course, you have to remember today we're in 2021. Things are different. The skills that you learn um, in any filmmaking degree, uh, if you wish to pursue it academically or if you want to do freelance, um, means that you can work across the board. So you don't necessarily have to just work in film. There's a lot of production because we don't call it film uh, filmmaking really anymore. It's more production. Um, so if you can work on a film, then it means you can work on a commercial. It means you can work on a TV series or a web series or whatever. And so automatically um, that expands the scope of, uh, of potentially what you, where you could be working and how much income you could be making. And of course, now with social media, you know, obviously that's even more, um, even more opportunities. So in my time, it was kind of different. I think now um, there's a lot more uh, to be said for, uh, for income. Fantastic. Yazan, talk to us about some of the opportunities that a young person interested in film should be looking out for. So I heard you saying things like if you can if you can go into film, you can do commercials. If you can do commercials, Mm. you can do um, uh, you can you can work in production. And now with social media, what should they be tapping into? Because I'm still hearing young people saying, Miss V, I really need some work experience. Can you help me? And and I'm one to say, don't wait for that opportunity. Make that opportunity. So you're in the industry. How does that translate for a young person that wants to gain experiences? Um, Well, there's a lot of... So Dubai is actually a place where we shoot a lot of commercials. So, or, you know, corporate videos. um, You know, there's really a lot that's being... Uh, produced in terms of that kind of content and they're always looking for people to come in and intern to come in and be a PA a production assistant on the set to even come in and watch you know there's really a lot that you can learn from um, you know these uh, uh, these opportunities there's also a lot of um, opportunities to intern at production companies you know we, there's a big shortage actually of interns so I think it all it takes is really just you know, for somebody to bridge the gap between between you guys, between your students, and between these uh, these production companies, and I'm sure you know if anybody's interested, they could go in and shadow a camera operator, you know, or work in a production office with a producer um, and see how uh, you know a production is managed and put together. So there's really a lot in terms of opportunity. Uh, it's just a question of being able to seek it, and this is something honestly, the biggest thing I learned throughout my career is that you have to make your own opportunity. You have to be the one, you can't wait for people to come to you. You have to be the one who goes out like, you know, any of your students now could just Google production companies, get on the phone, give them a call, you know, ask if they have any shoots coming up. They, they'll be more than happy to oblige, you know, um, and they're more than happy to, to have an extra pair of hands on set. So I think this is really a big lesson that I learned. Um, and I would say 99% of all the opportunities that I've worked on have come from doing stuff like that, you know, just kind of cold calling, getting in touch with people, building a network. Because you have to remember also our production uh, industry in Dubai is not that big. So once you work with one uh, production company, you know, and they, they start to know you, they'll, they'll start to get you on um, different kinds of productions and then word will spread and then you'll be able to work on other productions and with other companies. So. Um, really, it's it's all a matter of you, you know, making the effort to make your your own opportunity. Fantastic! I know that one of your aims is to use your experience and contribute to the development of independent film and the industry here in the MENA region. What mm. does that mean, and how does that translate in your career? Um, <clears throat> so, aside from obviously, you know, the, my my current job is head of film here at the uh, SA Dubai is a direct contributor to this, but a lot of the work that I've done throughout my, throughout my career has involved, um, you know, organizing film festivals, promoting film culture. This is something that's, that I'm very interested in because I feel like there's really a lot of emphasis in the region on um, creating people or, sorry, uh, on training people to create content. Uh, but there isn't as much emphasis on educating audiences about the importance of independent film and how to be able to read an independent text um, you know, it's, it's something that I think is, is in shortage because, again, especially with the younger generations, a lot of the content that they consume comes from Netflix. It's all commercial stuff. And I think that, you know, that's all well and good. And that has its, 
um, you know, uh, upsides and it's entertaining and it's great. But I think that the true value of film is, is in, in the art and in the culture. And I think if you want to learn to be a film, truly learn to be a filmmaker, I think, you know, it's much more important for you to be able to, to watch films from across the world, not just from Hollywood, independent films um, that are, that take less into consideration uh, when making um, their, their film. Uh, they don't have commercial considerations. They're thinking purely about the art. And I think that this is something that's really important for our region. Um, and so, like I said, in organizing film festivals, um, you know, um, working on film screenings, I used to run an independent theater in Jordan uh, previously before uh, this job. Um, and, you know, that was something that, that really brought me a lot of joy because I was able to um, screen films to different audiences, to people from different walks of life and to really engage in dialogue and and open up a discourse about film and art and the importance of, um, you know, specific topics that have to do with society. Because ultimately art is really a big component in how our society is constructed. And so for me, this is something that's, that's you know, very close to home and something that I feel very strongly about. I can feel that. In speaking with a past guest, what I heard, what I heard her telling me is, Maria, essentially a filmmaker is a storyteller. If you have a story, you want to tell it, you really want to use that creative energy and do that. Would you agree with that? Is, is, would you see your role as a filmmaker and as a teacher of film in helping people bring stories to life using film? Well, I think, uh, you know, if you want to go a step further, you can say that we really make sense of the world uh, through stories, right? I think we tell and we hear, and we, uh, you know, um, uh, thousands and thousands of stories throughout our lives. Um, I think storytelling is a constant um, in our day-to-day -day life. And so I think that, um, yeah, a filmmaker absolutely is a storyteller. Um, I think stories are very important. I think stories really teach us about ourselves and about history. My screenwriting teacher um, at university always used to say, you tell a story to your village and the world will listen. Um, because stories are relatable, um, you know, because obviously we're all human, we, could, we can all relate to to different kinds of stories. So yeah, absolutely. I would agree with that. Fantastic. Okay. I want to narrow in on a concept that our students watching right now will, will be learning about and eventually probably creating their own. Talk to me a little bit about tips for a young person making promotional videos, either music videos or a different type of film. What are some of the elements they should be paying attention to? So it's not just about telling the story of the brand. It's also about bringing that brand to life. How do they do that using film? Um, well, I think film in this regard is a, is a relative term. I think maybe videography is a better term to use it because, you know, film, film is a big term and film, you know, refers to a motion picture. Um, whereas, uh, you know, if you're creating like a corporate video or a promotional video or music video, that's a different kind of production. I mean, sure, they, they maybe require um, a lot of the similar uh, skill sets. But I think if you're um, speaking from a commercial perspective, I think um, it's important to, first of all, have the skill. Um, so the technical skill set is something that's really important. So if you want to, um, you know, if you're hired to make a promotional video for somebody or to make a video for social media, I think it's important to be able to use a camera, um, to be able to use uh, editing software, um, to be able to do, to use lighting. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, these are, so from a technical standpoint, that's important. Um, and also I think it's important to be able to communicate with your clients and understand what it is they want exactly, which sometimes can be very difficult, um, but communication I think is key. Um, so I would say, you know, speak to your client as much as you can, um, show them different drafts, um, really have them guide you um, because this is not something that comes from, you know, the concept doesn't necessarily, uh, isn't organic, it comes from you. You're inspired or instructed to do, um, you know, a specific task. And I think that you need to really understand what that task is in order to be able to, uh, to complete it. And it's never bad to ask a question. So you always got to make sure that you ask a question and if you don't get the answer you want, then you or, or the answer that you understand, then um, you got to ask again because ultimately no one's going to do it for you, right? You're, you're responsible for translating. So it's great that you said not to be afraid to ask the question. <coughs> Watching this will be young people that won't know what those questions are. Can you give mm -hmm. us some, you know, some of your top, top tips for putting or drafting a question together? Um, well, I mean, really, 
when you're translating something visually, when you're taking a, a concept and you're translating it visually, sometimes the feedback that comes from your client is literal. So, you know, they want their actor to be on a horse walking, you know, uh, kind of trotting along the beach. And so that's literal. Um, sometimes um, they will give you, uh, you know, an ambiguous, um, you know, a phrase like, uh, I want it to be exciting or I want it to be, uh, you know, spectacular. I want it to be, uh, moving and sometimes when it's vague it's hard um, for you to understand as somebody who who's going to be the content creator and so I think that the key in those uh, in those scenarios is to be able to to actually ask the question say okay what do you mean by I want it to be moving um, what does that mean exactly what does that entail and then you can brainstorm with your client because in this scenario your client is essentially your partner you're making this piece of work together so you know, obviously they're hiring you and, and you're, you're making the video um, or the music video for them. But I think it's important to really understand exactly what they want. And so I wouldn't say there's a specific question. I would say that you can maybe try and just make sure they're as thorough as possible. So ask them to explain to you exactly what they mean and maybe take notes um, and then come back to them with an idea and then have them approve it and then you go and make it. Brilliant. Yazan, what would you say have been some of the faux pas that you have seen along your career path, either things that you've done or maybe things that you've seen colleagues doing and you think, you know, mm. definitely be careful? Showing up late, I would say, is the number one faux pas. I've been, I was fired once on a production, I was working on a commercial and I showed up two minutes late and I was fired. And I deserved it because you always have to show up 10 minutes early. So I think time management is something that is, uh, you know, that I learned the hard way. And I've never shown up late to anything literally since then. Um, so I think it's, uh, you know, it's important to, to understand that, you know, time is money and, and you have to really manage your time um, and nobody's going to do it for you. Um, so that's, I think, one thing that's really important. Uh, another thing is, um, uh, I, again, not to be scared to ask a question. Far too often, I've seen people who end up on a set and they don't know, um, and they end up, you know, just kind of going through the motions and not doing a proper job because they're too scared to ask. Um, and I think that's a problem. So nobody's going to fire you for asking a question, right? Or nobody's going to, you know, nobody's going to think any less of you. I think we all need to understand that, uh, you know, working in any industry, but especially in the film industry, it's a constant learning curve. So I'm, what, almost 40 now, and I'm still learning. Uh, you know, anytime I'm on the set, I directed, I wrote and directed a film um, a couple of years ago, and that was such a huge learning uh, process for me um, across the board, you know, and um, you you have to understand that you're always going to be learning and some people on the set might know more than you and you need to see them more as, um, you know, people who you can learn from and who can, you can be um, inspired by. Yeah, so don't show up late time management mm. and, uh, and ask, ask questions. questions. Ask those questions. Don't stop learning and ask questions. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you one of my favorite questions, and then we're going to turn it over to our students to begin asking questions. So if you're out there in the classroom, start thinking of the questions that you want to be asking Yazan. Yazan, one of the issues that I see young people struggling with is the concept of how do they find a job? How did you find your first, first gig in film? So, as I said, I organized the film festival in Kuwait, uh, and it was a big success, and it was sold out on both nights. And based on that, I was hired by a production company who happened to be in attendance that night. They offered me a job the next day. Um, so, for me, I think it was more of an exception. Um, but today, it's a different story. I think, um, I think a really important... Um, a really important thing that you need to remember is you need to be able to create your own opportunities, like I said. So if you're somebody who's passionate about film, about making videos, about social media, so go out there and make a portfolio, make a show reel and send it, you know? And if you manage to um, get an internship in a production company, um, you know, this is usually the path to finding a job is that if they, you know, if you intern, if you find somebody there, um, you know, who's interested in your work, uh, eventually they'll hire you. Um, and if you're good and if you, you know, if you learn and if you're, you're able to build up your skill set, then that's how you find a job. Really. So you really have to get yourself out there and make your own opportunities. 
So I'm also hearing you say, I heard you say, put that portfolio together. So I'm, I'm also <clears throat> wondering, would you say that it is a good idea for young people not to just look for those production internships, but to create content? So maybe getting into yeah, well, you can do both with some of those small, small entities right now that might be yeah. needing help and can't really afford to go out and hiring those professionals. So sitting in the classroom, we have um, young people who have the skill they're absolutely incredibly creative and passionate and they can, they can jump into these internships. I see a mm -hmm. question just popping up. What was your favorite film project? So what was your favorite that you worked on? Uh, I worked on Transformers in, in Jordan in 2007, I want to say. I think it was Transformers 2. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. I, I love how you're like, yeah, I think it was Transformers too. Like, you know, like every day. Yeah, I remember. It was like 15 years ago. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, 12 years ago, 13, 14, sorry. I'm not good at math. Um, yeah, so Transformers 2 was a lot of fun. Uh, I also worked on The Hurt Locker with Catherine Bigelow. So that was fun. I mean, I was a PA. It wasn't really anything major, but it was really cool to be on set. Uh, for Transformers, it was really cool to be on set with Michael Bay and Megan Fox and Shia LaBeouf and all of that kind of stuff. Again, I didn't do anything major, but it was not, really not, cool not working Not that, that we're name dropping, not that we're name dropping. I can see more questions coming in. Yazan, <laughs> tell us why a young person should come to SAE. I mean, a creative institute in Dubai. Why, why SAE and why not anywhere else? Um, well, I suppose I think the big selling point um, that we have is that our degree teaches you um, uh, a number of skills across the board. So you're learning technical skills, you're learning um, also um, storytelling, directing, producing, um, and these and other above the line skills and below the line skills, such as you know working with lights and um, and editing and all of that kind of stuff. So you learn all of that um, throughout the course of our career, and you have the chance to try your hand at everything. So I remember when I went to film school, I thought I was God's gift to producing um, and I was very wrong and I'm not a producer today. And I discovered that in film school and I ended up working um, more as a writer, um, uh, you know, and, uh, and the director. And that's really kind of where I found my calling. So I think, but I wouldn't have done that had I not tried my hand at everything. And so that's a big selling point that we have here at SAE. Fantastic. Um, another, yeah, another, another thing is that it's very practical. So you're always working on projects. You're always going to be making a film. You're always working in, in a group. Um, and so the best way to learn how to make a film is to make a film, right? So, you know, to make a film, to make mistakes and to get feedback and then make another film and learn from your mistakes and so on. Fantastic. That, that's absolutely amazing. Yazan, I'm going to quit the recording so we can turn live to our, our audience. I can see questions coming through and I want to be able to um, I want to be able to let our students ask you them directly. I think that would be really fun for them. So out in the virtual world, thank you for watching. We were talking with Yazan Al-Ghazawi, who is currently the head of film at SAE Creative Institute here in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Yazan, for joining. And we thank will you. see you at our next Desk Careers Digital Spotlight.